So let's keep let's keep going. Let's um, let's look at some definitions. Um, what is a definition of a percentile? Very often, and those of you who've taken your standardized tests, you know, GRE, SATs, etc., begin to understand that you look at things in terms of percentile. I'll give you an example. Given an observed value x in a data set x, x is the pth percentile of the data. If the percentage of the data that are less than or equal to x is p, the number p is the percentile rank of x. It means that, let's say for example, if you know you took a test and you were very happy because you got you were in the 90th percentile. What it means is that of the people who took that particular test at that particular time, 90% of the students scored equal to or less than you. Which all that tells you is that if you got a 90th percentile, you were in the top 10. Okay, now let's, uh, from the point of, from the notion of percentiles, let's look at the quartile. If you look at quartile, you would say, okay, this is the, I'm in the top quartile, which means in the top 25%, which means 75% of the people, you know, for that particular parameter are lower than you, have a lower score, for example, than you. This is the 50th, uh, you know, the second quartile, the third quartile, and the fourth quartile. So, for example, you know, if you think in terms of, of, uh, of, of, of an infant's weight, for example, you would say, okay, I, uh, my son is in the lower fourth quartile. It means that he's in the lower 25% of, of, of what is considered a, a, of a normal weight. Okay, so you'd say, okay, okay, all right, this kid needs to eat more, for example, right? So in addition to three quartiles, there are extreme values. So you have the maximum and the minimum. So there are five values. So the quartile one, right? So this is the first quartile between one and two, two and three, right? And the minimum and the maximum. So you have five numbers, five numbers summary of the data set is the minimum, quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, and maximum. And if you kind of uh, look at this from, you know, if, you're, if you had eyes here and looked down, you could actually represent this as a box. Okay, so this is from zero to 25, 25 to 50, 50 to 75, 75 to 100 percentage. And so this is, this is the quartile. So this is your five number summary of the numbers gives you a lot of information about that particular thing. Now let's begin to discuss null hypothesis. Now this is essentially the last part of this class and a null hypothesis discussion is necessary because we are talking about, we talked about variability of data, we talked about the different ways of presenting data, the different uh, the different parameters that are the measurable parameters which tells you something about your data, right? For example, what's the mode, what's the mean, what's the median, etc. What is the distribution, right? What is a histogram representation? What is a relative frequency? We looked at all those terms. What we want to begin to understand now is as we bring, as we begin to look at data, especially large data, or uh, what is the importance of that data? How significant it is? How important it is? Uh, if I were to compare two data sets, how, how good is a comparison? How significant is a comparison? Even Is the comparison even worth it? Okay. And so these are what are called significance tests. And in order to begin to look into the significance test, we have to look into what is called a null hypothesis. So let's look at the definition. A null hypothesis is a hypothesis that says there is no statistical significance between the two variables in the hypothesis. It is the hypothesis that the researcher is trying to disprove. Okay, so if you if I'm looking at two variables, I'm going to say the null hypothesis says that there is no statistical significance. There's no reason why these are any different. Okay, these two variables are not different. So if you see the numbers that are different, what are the tests that we can come up with to show that they are different? And if you run that test and it says, oh, no difference, then you say, oh, the null hypothesis is true. If on the other hand, these two things, and we, and you might, you know, I'm trying to kind of talk into clouds here, but if you look at these two measurements or variables or, or data sets and you say, there is nothing statistically different. The numbers might look different, but we've run a couple of tests and they tell you that they're not different. Then you accept the null hypothesis that there is no statistical significance. On the other hand, if you say 
Well, they are statistically significantly different. There is some statistical significance between these two variables. They are different for a reason, and these numbers that are different are is, is of significance. Then we reject the null hypothesis, and then we have to propose and look for an alternative hypothesis. Okay? It is a hypothesis that the researcher is trying to disprove. At this point, I have to say something like correlation does not imply causation, and we look at a reason. So, for example, if two things that are unrelated happen together, one doesn't have to cause the other, okay? In the sense that even if even if there is a some sort of a kind of a statistical correlation between them, and if we can't find it, then we say that correlation does not imply causation. Just because two things happen, and even if the numbers tell you that they are there is some significance, it doesn't imply that one has caused the other or one is the result or one is downstream of the other. Okay, so remember I said when you reject the null hypothesis, you have to then accept or look for an alternative hypothesis. So the alternative hypothesis states that there is a statistically significant relationship between two methods or two measurements or two variables or two comparisons between data sets. One of the things that we have to also look at is what is called the p-value. P-value is a measure of the significance of one results. So hypothesis tests use a p-value to weigh the strength of the evidence, what the data are telling you. P-value is a number between 0 and 1. Smaller the p-value, the more important is that particular evidence. Okay? The p-value, the smaller the p-value, the better it is. Let's look at why the smaller the value, the better your, your data is. The p-value is a measure of the significance. Okay, So a small value, less than 0 0.5, indicates strong evidence against the null hypothesis, but means that it tells you that the alternative hypothesis, that means the test for statistical significance, is true. Okay, That means the null hypothesis can be rejected. A large p-value greater than 0 0.05 indicates weak evidence against the null hypothesis, so you fail to reject the null hypothesis, which means you say, well, I'm trying to do these measurements. The p-value is quite large, which means that, okay, the, the test, uh, the null hypothesis has to be accepted because there's no significant difference. P-value is very close to the cutoff, 0 0.05, are considered to be marginal. And these p-values allows people to draw their own conclusions. They might try another set of measurements.